Hello everyone, I'm back to tuning into episode 8 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, we're going to bring you more stratospheric data. And I shall get on with that for you, <coughs> excuse me, in a moment. Just say that first, video is saying it was our 6am. <coughs> UK weather forecast, and we may or may not be live with day dead water as you can hear. I'm coughing away, so uh, I've got the lurgy a little bit, and I'll just let everybody know later on today uh, whether I feel like doing live or not. If not, then it'll be just like a regular uh, video upload for the 10th to 14th day of Forbes Christmas Wednesday. Hope you're having a lovely day, everybody. Please like, share, subscribe on or today's videos content on this Christmas Wednesday. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for doing. Now, okay, we're gonna start off. <coughs> so you want to get out of bear with me with this? I really have got the, the tickle in the throat uh, at the moment. So we're gonna start off with the uh, current situation at 10 HPA over the Arctic of the North Pole versus average. Average course is the grey line. So the black line show, shows where we've been with temperature at 10 HPA over the North Pole and stratosphere and where we currently are. And the grey line is where we should be at this point of the year for temperatures at 10 HPA. So we can see that we at the moment are uh, rather above average with a temperature at 10 HPA and have been generally throughout most of uh, December actually uh, running a little bit above average at this level of the stratosphere. That's not an SSW, it is only very minor water, but it has been enough to displace the polar vortex a little bit at its roof, at its roots. If we go low down to 30 HPA, there's something quite dramatic is starting to happen. Look how the black line is lifting up quite sharply. So through most of December, it's actually been around or a little bit below average at one point around the turn of the month. It did go down. <coughs> sorry, sorry, get everybody did go down to around minus 80. But we're currently up to around minus 65, minus 64, something like that. The black line lifting up quite sharp. Again, that's not an SSW, but it is a pretty um, uh, stark lift up in the uh, in, in, in the stratospheric temperature. Of course, again, SSW, we want to be going up to that sort of level up there. <laughs> that's how it, it looks when you get an SSW. And they always look really quite dramatic, some stratospheric warning of them. So uh, this is what's happening at 10 HPA at the moment in terms of potential. These blue colours, these are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. A warming, a stratospheric warming is now starting to take place from uh, from uh, the east part of the Mediterranean and North Africa, pushing north, pushing the Black Sea uh, up towards um, southern parts of Russia. This warming is going to intensify as we head towards the new year. So uh, by the end of the year, we've got a pretty widespread and intense uh, stratospheric warming event going on here over the uh, over Russia and Siberia. That intensifies further into the new year. The orange is turning to deep red colours. That's the 3rd of January. A very, very significant warming <coughs> of a stratosphere over Russia and Siberia starting to push on in towards the uh, Arctic and in towards the North Pole as well. We go beyond that into the extended range with this GFS rub. It should be enough to reverse the winds. These red colours look like they're more or less penetrating into the North Pole itself. So that should be enough to send the zone wind into reverse and hence a technical sudden stratospheric wind event looks likely there um to mean displacement event up to the 6th of january with these blue colors being pushed out of the pole and down into north america the north atlantic and also into northern parts of the europe as well um the temperature doesn't show a split but i am told that this particular gfs number 12 said does does actually split the vortex but it's not apparent by uh by the temperature forecast there um so uh we'll just have to wait and see you know whether this turns into a split uh, or it is just a displacement uh, there we can also see from next so as from metro seal we can also see from net weather um uh, the temperature forecast for 30 hpa based on that gfs run so again the current position shows <coughs> sorry again if we wear the uh, current position shows where the cold temperatures are 30 hpa already you know we've established that there is quite a significant warming going on 
at 30 HPA. Um, look what happens though when we get to the end of the uh, GFS run. So keep an eye on the red colours here. This is the warming, the stratospheric warming from Siberia in towards uh, the Canadian side, I suppose, of, of the Arctic. Keep an eye on those blue colours and see how at 30 HPA we do actually get a split of the polar vortex bay in terms of the temperature forecast at uh at 30 hpa there so uh yeah even if we don't get a split at 10 hpa it looks like <coughs> we get we might get a split at 30 hpa quite interesting that that's closer to the troposphere of course so at both boundary levels 10 and 30 hpa it looks like a split of the pv uh, is possible. Let's go through the GFS ensembles. So this is the control run, go for a displacement event with the temperature forecast. Anyway, this is ensemble member number two, get displacement event with uh, that one. Ensemble member number three splits the vortex. Ensemble member number four um, just about splitting the vortex as well. Ensemble member number five here splitting uh, the vortex. Ensemble member number six. Um, is a displacement event, I think, on some member of a seven. Um, again, displacement event with that one. Ensemble member number eight, again, uh, just about to pick the vortex with that one. Ensemble member number nine looks like that, again, displacement with that one. Ensemble member of a ten. Displacement. Ensemble member number 11 splits the vortex. Ensemble member number 12. How's that one looking? That splits the vortex. That looks a real classic, I have to say. Ensemble member number 12. <coughs> Ensemble member number 13. More or less splitting the vortex. Ensemble member number 14 splits the vortex. Ensemble member number 15. Displacement. Ensemble member number 16. Uh, I think that's a displacement. Ensemble member number 17, displacement. Ensemble member number 18, displacement. Ensemble member number 19, looks like that. That splits the vortex very nicely. Remember, the reason we're looking at this is like when you get a split of the PV as opposed to a displacement event, um, the impacts and blocking seem to last longer and be more extreme with a split event compared to a displacement event. Um, but this isn't uh, whether we get an SSW. An SSW classified as reversal of zone winds at 10 HPA. So we look to see whether it's a split or a displacement, though, to see uh, what likely impacts it's going to have on the atmosphere. That's on solid member 21, number 22. Looking like that. On solid member number 23. Um, looks like that. Oh, that gets so close to split the vortex there. <coughs> on solid member. Number 24, displacement, ensemble member 25, uh, more or less splits the vortex, ensemble member number 26, um, that more or less splits the vortex, I think, really, ensemble member number 27, it's like that, ensemble member number 28, looks like that, uh, displacement, ensemble member number 29, like that, displacement with that to them. Uh, and ensemble member number 30 splits the vortex. So, you know, quite a, quite a high number, actually, of ensemble members are splitting the vortex through the first week of January. Visual weather is cool. So, the green lines are the GFS ensemble. The only important line just here is a zero line. So, if the green line, dip below, if the green line dips below the zero line, then zero winds have reversed. You see there are... Oh, Quite a few um, ensemble members that are going for a reversal of zone winds would therefore be a technical, technically uh, would be classified as a major sudden stratospheric warming event with the wind going, zone wind going into reverse at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north over the Arctic and over the North Pole. Uh, that's all GFS data. This is from the ECMWF. So uh, this is the temperature anomaly forecast for week one, New Year's Day to the 8th of January. Well, you see this big area of warming here. This is the one we've actually been talking about. The temperature anomalies uh, of 10 degrees or more above average. Get an SSW, you're going to go to like 50 or 60 degrees or more above average. But as we've already established, you know, from this, 
yes, we will indeed be going to like 50 or 60 degrees above average over Russia, Siberia, possibly, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, possibly uh, penetrating into the Arctic of the North Pole with that. The warming continues week two as well. So this is a long-lasting warming, lasting a couple of weeks. This has been 8th to 15th of January. Um, no, uh, warming continuing to that week, and really continuing to week three as well. This is the 15th to the 2nd of January, because the warm area is shrinking a little bit, but still, right over top of the pole, more or less, we have a, a temperature that is like 10 degrees or more above normal. Uh, the next week is the uh, 22nd, 29th of January. Then the warming area shrinks quite a lot. We can't maintain those warm temperature anomalies indefinitely, of course, of the final week is the 29th of January, 5th of February. By then, we begin to cool down as you would expect it actually started to go a little bit cooler than average across um you know the the the, the arctic of the polar field of course by then we should have a tropospheric response to uh, all of this so that's going to be the next interesting thing focus on if we do get an SW, what is the of spirit spot? So another way of looking at the polar vortex is with the zona wing. So um, the temperature is like the polar vortex at its roots of the stratosphere um, over the North Pole, excuse <coughs> me, and the zona wing is like the strength, the depicts of the strength of the uh, polar vortex. At the moment, the PV is from, again, the SMW 46 day, uh, day of forecast. Well, at the moment, the zona wing is actually weaker than average. That's because of a displacement event that we have had already uh, via the minor warming of the stratosphere. We are going to see the zona wing powering up very briefly around the new year. And then it's downhill all the way. And actually, for the first time, the ECM 46 day ensemble is going for a majority uh, of ensemble members going for a reverse of zero wing. So that's your important zero line just there. Uh, well, it's a little bit difficult to make out the thick blue line. So the thick blue line here is the ensemble mean. Notice that does go, actually, for a few days slightly uh, under the zero line, telling us about a majority. And this is the third time this has happened on the east side of the 46th day. <coughs> Do we can? This first time it's happened. I mean, ECM uh, 46 day. A majority of EC on some members are now going for a reversal of zona wings and therefore a technical SSW. I'll just go back here and let's have a look at uh, the mean cell pressure. I don't see if there's any sign of a uh, of a tropospheric response to this so uh, actually i think go to 500 millibar hpa and um have a look from the north pole view down so uh, that's week one 500 uh, hpa uh, um uh, anomaly. So, um, uh, geopotential height anomaly. This is the first to the uh, 8th of January. Notice the orange colours there. There is a bit of a blocking signal in the North Atlantic around Greenland, Iceland, going back in towards the Arctic trough below pressure. We're here. This could be a cold signal as early as the first week of January for. Um, for northern and western parts of Europe. The next week uh, sees that blocking signal strengthen a little bit more. So this is 8th to 15th of January. Again, blocking in the Atlantic going back to the pole below average heights to much of northwest Europe. Again, that should be bringing in the wind for cold. As <coughs> you mean, northeasterly direction. Uh, it's also could stay quite cold into week three as well, 15th to 22nd of January. Um, probably cold back continuing for week four, that 22nd to 29th of January. And lastly, 29th of January, 5th of February. I've been mean, still with a strong blocking signal. So um, this could be quite a prolonged cold spell getting going um, by a SSW if it comes off. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. So week one, a little bit colder than average for the first week of January. Colder still, uh, more widely across Europe for week two. Um, week three, of course, will go further out to the weekends, but still looking very cold across much of northern Europe anyway. Starting to get us back to milder temperature anomalies later on to January, but I wouldn't take that overly seriously. You know, the model would always try to revert back to the default uh, setup, which is milder. So, uh, all looking quite interesting, I have to say, in terms of Stratswatch episode 8. Um, and this is in line with the gas rose winter forecast, of course. <coughs> This is in line with gas weather's winter forecast as well. Of course, we did predict an SSW in January, occurring sometime uh, in the early to middle part of the month, and 
to be followed by blocking and cold weather. Is it all coming on track? <laughs> Are they going to have a successful forecast this year um, after a mild December, which again, we did predict temperatures would be mild and average despite the cold start in December. It could all be, you know, looking quite good for gas over the winter forecast. But it's early days, of course. Let's get the SSW and then uh, see what type of SSW we have, whether it's a displacement, which will have a tropospheric response, but could be uh, rather more muted and not as long-lasting, or we could still get a split, and if we get a split, then that could set us up for uh, really quite a uh, split, then that could set us up for really quite an extended period of colder weather. So let's wait and see. We've got to get the SSW together first, and then we shall go from there. Episode 9 next week is going to be looking very, very interesting. Will we be able to confirm that an SSW is actually taking place on episode 9 of Strat to Watch next week. Uh, same time, same place. I shall see you then, baby. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your Christmas Wednesday. <coughs> you began, everybody. You enjoy the rest of your Christmas Wednesday. Thanks so much for preparing with the video of the coughing and that. I know it's a bit off putting. Uh, I'm very sorry about that. You know, it's just so much going about. Um, in this winter in terms of colds and coughs and <laughs> different different bugs and viruses. So uh, I'm very sorry, you know, but hopefully uh, this bug will be on its way out very soon. So um, thank you so much everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas Wednesday. I'll be confirming on the community page whether we're doing a live stream at 6 where it's just going to be a video upload. So I'll let everybody know a little bit later on. But in any case, for episode 8, watch that's all for now. And thanks for watching.